This is the telltale heart test. Go ahead and type in your first and last name. Number one, what does the narrator want people to think about him? First choice, B, that he suffers from anxiety, but that he is not a madman. Second choice, A, that he is mentally unstable and therefore his crime is not his fault. Or C, that he is angry at the old man and the old man deserves death. Okay, so which, what do you think overall does the narrator want people to think about him? And then now for number two, what part of the story helped you answer that? So what line from the story can help you have answered number one? D, it was a low, dull, quick sound, much such a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I gasped for breath, and yet the officers heard it not. B, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. C, true, nervous, very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am. But why will you say I am mad? Okay, click which part of the text helped you decide the answer for number one. Okay, number three. Read the part of the story below. What conclusion can you draw about the narrator? Presently, I heard a slight groan, and I knew it was the groan of mortar terror. It was not a groan of pain or of grief. Oh, no, it was the low, stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. I knew the sound well. Many a night, just at midnight, when all the world slept, it had welled up from my own bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo, the terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt and pitied him, although I chuckled at heart. A, he is a cruel person who enjoys torturing others. C, he finds joy and pleasure in stalking the old man. Or D, he can relate to the old man's terror because of the madness that haunts him. So he kind of understands the old man because he feels haunted himself. Is that what's going on in this passage? Okay, definitely look around right around this part of the passage. That will be the part that will help you make that decision. Number four, select the piece of evidence. So what tax evidence help you? And num number three, presently I heard a slight groan and I knew it was the groan of mortal terror. B, it was not a groan of pain or of grief. Oh no, it was a low stifled sound that arose from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. Or C, I knew the sound well. Many a night just at midnight when all the world slept, it had welled up from my own bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo, the terrors that distracted me. Number five. Why do you and guess that the narrator greets the old man so heartily every morning? When you see the word infer in the test, it's like making an educated guess as a reader. So what kind of inference can we make to why he's so friendly to the old man? B, because it is a habit. C, because the narrator is a very cheerful person. Or D, because the narrator does not want the old man to be suspicious or know his plan to kill him. Number six, why do you infer, remember, make an educated guess as a reader, the narrator finally admits to his crime? B, the ghost of the old man was haunting him and he wanted it to stop. C, the officers tricked him into admitting the deed. Or D, the noises he was hearing were driving him insane and he couldn't take it. Number seven, consider the noises and the narrator, the narrator was haunted by at the end of the story. What do you infer they could represent a the old man's ghost b the narrator's guilt or c the amount of time the narrator has left to live so at the end of the story when he starts hearing things what do you think it really is like why why do you think he thinks he hears a heart beating he's not really hearing that but why does he think that what's going on it's your best guess number eight what is the tone of this passage how did the author write this passage like what kind of way do you think this was written? And every morning when the day broke, I went boldly into the chamber and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone and inquiring how he had passed the night. So you see, he would have had to been a very profound old man indeed to suspect that every night, just at 12, I looked in upon him while he slept. 
Is this confident? A, B, suspicious? Or C, happy? Okay, how does the narrator sound? How does he sound? Okay, and then based on what you picked, what words led you to that? So what words either led you to confident, suspicious, or happy? A, broke, inquiring, past, profound. B, mourning, chamber, spoke, suspect. Or C, boldly, courageously, hardy, inquiring. So one of these sets of words led you to your answer on number eight. Number 10, read this part of the story. What is the mood of the passage? So how does it make you feel when you hear me read this? I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first slight noise. When he had turned in bed, his fears had been ever since growing upon him. He had been trying to fancy them causeless, but not, could not. He had been saying to himself, it's nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor. It is merely a cricket which had made a single chirp. Yes, he'd been trying to comfort himself with these suppositions, but he had found all in vain, all in vain, because death in approaching him had stalked with the black shadow before him and enveloped the victim. And it was the mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he neither saw nor heard, to feel the presence of my hand, of my head within the room. Is it A, matter of fact, happy? B, tense, suspenseful? D, lighthearted, amusing. Number 11, what is it about the old man that scares and angers the narrator of the telltale heart? A, his clouded blue eye. He also called it a vulture eye. B, his old house. Or D, his hook nose. Number 12, what does the old man in the telltale heart do when he hears a noise? A, he reaches for a gun. C, he walks to the door. D, he sits up and asks, who's there? Number 13, the narrator of the telltale heart chuckles at the old man's fear. What does this response tell you about the narrator? Kind of laughs that the old man's afraid. A, he likes comedy. B, he is impatient. Or C, he is cruel. Number 14, where does the narrator of the telltale heart hide the old man's body after dismembering him? A, in a graveyard in the backyard, B, in the bathtub, or D, under the floorboards. Number 15, in the telltale heart, why does a neighbor call the police? A, he heard a shriek, C, he saw the murder through a window, or D, he saw the murder in a dream. 16, what does the narrator start to think he hears towards the middle and into the end of the story? A, the roar of the ocean, B, the sound of the neighbors. C, the beating of a heart. 17. On the eighth night, the narrator of the telltale heart grows furious. How does the old man's feelings contrast with the narrator's? A, the old man is calm and sleeps well. B, the old man is fearful and hears sounds. C, the old man is joyful and laughs in his sleep. Okay, so he's getting angry. The narrator is. How is that different than the old man? What's happening to the old man? How does he feel when the narrator is spying on him and he's hearing these noises? Number 18, as the telltale heart progresses, how does the narrator's mood change? B, he becomes increasingly excited. C, he becomes increasingly calm. Or D, he becomes increasingly happy. So what happens as the story goes on? 19. Why does the narrator finally confess to the murder? A. He wants to shock the police officers. B. He thinks the officers hear the heartbeat and are mocking him. Or C. The neighbor hears a shriek. Compare or contrast. Read the following examples and decide if they are a comparison or a contrast. Compare is part of the Venn diagram where the two circles overlap. Contrast is on the outside circles. Both Ms. Mrs. Purdue and Mrs. Rakowski enjoy teaching language arts. A, compare, B, contrast. 21, Mrs. Manns and Mrs. Rakowski like to listen to the music of pink. A, compare, B, contrast. 22, while Mrs. Trudeau likes heavy metal, 